Now we're uh, turning to uh, another uh, uh, really uh, excellent researcher and engine uh, uh, expert. Uh, Martin Tuner is, is with uh, the uh, Division of Combustion Engines and the uh, Department of Energy Sciences at Lund uh, University. He's uh, published quite extensively on a wide variety of uh, engine technologies, such as uh, HCCI, uh, homogeneous charge, uh, uh, compression ignition uh, cycles. He's looked at uh, diverse uh, fuel quality effects. He's looked at a uh, wide variety of oxygenated fuels, and uh, we're very uh, happy to have, have Martin with us. So thank you, Martin, for coming, and we'll look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Paul, for the kind introduction. So my name is Martin Tuner. I'm going to talk about uh, methanol engine research at Lund University. And I'm happy to see that you're still awake and alive. Uh, I mean, it's a difficult hour uh, <laughs> after lunch like this. I noticed also that in the program, it says that I'm a consultant at Wärtsilä. I had no idea. <laughs> they, they told me. So. I never saw any money, so, uh, but we had a bit of discussion. Versus, like, I just wanted to come here, but they couldn't come, uh, yeah. so I promised to show some slides from their work as well. I think they're good, doing a great job. So. Yeah. Okay, the outline for my presentation, I will talk about the methanol project in Lund, um, but I also will show you a bit of benchmarking results of alternative fuels and engine concepts. There are different uh, options around. I will talk something that uh, is um, a Lund speciality, partially for mixed combustion, try to explain how that works. Uh, some of the results from methanol combustion simulations and experiments. Um, some of the Wärtsilä engine results, and I will end with a conclusion, and some ideas about research opportunities. So Lund University, it's uh, one of the biggest universities in Sweden. We have around 46,000 students. And uh, it's a very research intensive uh, university. So two thirds of the funding go is directed to research. And we are building uh, new capabilities uh, with around three billion euros uh, the coming two years here. I belong to the faculty of engineering and uh, down here you can, is the po pointer visible? No. Uh, can we do that somehow? Into a pen. Does it show now? No? Okay. So I'm at the Combustion Engines Group, and we are three professors, and we have a bit more than 20 researchers, uh, PhD students. And, uh, but we work closely together with other groups at Lund University. So I could say that the engine cluster in Lund uh, involves around 100 people uh, doing research with combustion engines. So, fairly big group. And we've been quite successful over the years looking into this advanced engine concept with low temperature combustion to avoid NOx emissions and soot emissions and so on. So, and this has attracted the interest not only from the Swedish manufacturers, but many of the international manufacturers as well. So we have quite many of these uh, companies uh, which we interact with. For instance, Wärtsilä. Uh, our lab is newly refurbished, uh, which was way too expensive, but uh, we are happy now at least. So we have like 15 test cells, and we have mainly heavy duty engines, and we have some light duty engines as well. And we also have a Wärtsilä engine in the basement. And uh, the methanol project that we are running is called MOOT 2030, which is a Swedish acronym for the project. It involves four PhD students. And if you look at the box uh, saying engine experiments, you can possibly see a uh, combustion engine. It's typically how they look in our lab. So we have like. 15, 20 of those in our labs. And um, the figure with optical diagnostics shows some of our speciality. We have a lot of glass engines. So we look inside the combustion chamber using laser technologies and so on to see what really happens with combustion. Um, quite interesting to do that. But it's difficult to measure many things. So we follow up with advanced modeling. So we model exactly the experiments we're doing in the engines. And by that, we can explain a lot of things that actually happens within the experiments. And we follow up also with system analysis to see if our concepts can work in a real engine and in a real vehicle. So that's the four legs of the project, and then we have the supporting companies that do in-house experiments and provide those results, for instance, Wärtsilä. And uh, we have also the Volvo companies, Scania is also involved in Stena as well. So we can ask ourselves, is methanol really the best fuel for the future? There are many different fuels around, so I made a benchmarking of alternative fuels, and this is not really published yet. It will be published in two months. 
So you were among the first to see what it's all about. So on the y-axis here, we can see the brake thermal efficiency of light duty engines, and I'm comparing this with the soot emissions of such engine. And in red, we see what is the baseline, or SI engines, gasoline type engines. We have a fairly low efficiency, but they don't produce any soot because of the homogeneous combustion. A diesel engine, on the other hand, can be more effective, but we produce more soot also, so that's the trade-off there. But if we start to add a bit of alcohol to the gasoline, or replace it completely with ethanol, then suddenly we have an SI engine that is more effective than a diesel engine. Methanol is not worse in this case. I think uh, actually the potential is higher, but there is not so much research yet on methanol, modern methanol SI engines. Isobethanol works as well, great in SI engines, of course. Um, we can also use alcohols in a, some of the advanced concepts. This is a sort of dual fuel concept with low temperature combustion, very high efficiency. Uh, hydrogen, of course, great fuel as well. And uh, hydrogen SI is the highest recorded efficiency I've ever seen for a light duty engine. And if you want to know more, you can ask Sebastian over there, Sebastian for Health, who knows more about this particular engine. Um, and then we have the PPC concept that was kind of developed in, uh, in Lund. Uh, this is a NAFTA fuel, which is a gasoline derivative fuel, or a raw gasoline, so to speak. So you should really compare it with the uh, gasoline engine with 34% uh, brake thermal efficiency. So we think we can do much better than uh, even the hydrogen engine in this particular context. And then we have all the different diesel alternative fuels. And what you can see on this picture here is that with a diesel process, whatever fuel you're kind of using, you're not getting the same efficiency as with an SI engine operating on alcohol. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Everyone is thinking about that diesel engine is the more effective one. But um, it seems to be a great potential for SI engines in the future. If we look at heavy duty engines, this is truck engines, um, and we see that the best diesel engine in this particular case has a brake efficiency of 47%. That's a Cummins engine one of the best in the world. But uh, the research concepts here, PPC and RCCI, can better that quite substantially. So there's potential for these concepts. And they also look low soot production concepts. Uh, dual fuel engines, alternative fuel for diesel engine doesn't really give any improvement. You can also see around 46% brake thermal efficiency. There are methanol and ethanol. Diesel type engines, medium duty size, those are kind of crude research, uh, so they are really not mature, but I included them as well. So to give an idea of what can be done with a diesel process with methanol. If we then look at the CO2 from these engines, uh, from tank to engine, so to speak, so we don't know what happens uh, with a conversion into a vehicle, and we don't know anything about production. And we see that uh, on the upper part of this um, uh, figure, we have the light duty engines, we have the gasoline engine with low efficiency, producing a lot of CO2 with respect to the energy it produces. Uh, diesel engines is better, but the best engines are the methanol engines here. Can you all see that? I cannot point, I guess, so unfortunately. Okay, so the methanol engines uh, are the best, except for hydrogen, of course, where we don't have any CO2 emissions at all. Um, on the heavy duty engine side, we see that um, um, Natural gas is the best. Even though the engine efficiency is fairly low, it's related, of course, to the relation of the C uh, carbon versus the hydrogen molecules in the fuel. Uh, but that can easily be much worse if you have a bit of leakage of the methane, of course. So, uh, and we haven't seen much methanol research yet on the heavy duty engines. So I think there's a good potential for heavy duty engines with very high efficiencies and low CO2 emissions. Looking at the other regulated emissions, we have NOx on the x-axis, we have hydrocarbon and CO on the y-axis. And uh, we can see that in the upper corner, you can see the du dual fuel concept uh, that is sort of combining the worst things you can. <laughs> so you get really high e emissions of everything. Um, if you do it really well with the dual fuel engine, you can improve that situation. Um, the diesel type engines have very low hydrocarbon and CO emissions, uh, usually produce quite a lot of NOx emissions. And the RCCI concept produces a lot of hydrocarbon emissions because it's premixed. I will show you about that later on. 
so that's maybe not the solution. We see that PPC concept is the best here, and all this emissions is before any after treatment system, but those are very expensive, so it's good if we can avoid those to start with. So what is PPC then? Partially premixed combustion. The best fuel for a diesel engine is gasoline. This is what, just what you saw in the, in the charts I showed you. And I think that methanol can be an even better fuel than gasoline for this diesel type engine. So the first clue we can take for PPC is if we do an EGR sweep. And uh, by increasing EGR, you can suppress NOx. That's why you introduced that for diesel engines. But uh, the story goes that uh, there was a guy at Volvo who was doing calibration tests and he fell asleep during this test. So the EGR just increased and uh, you know, we know that if you increase EGR, the soot starts to go up. It's the blue figure you have here, it starts to increase. So no one in their right mind continues on that. But he did, he, he wasn't aware. So when he woke up, suddenly he realized he had a combination of all regulated emissions were low. So that's one clue we can take for PPC. Uh, the second one is the injection timing. So start of injection sweep here for direct injection. And what is known as CI here is a diesel engine. You see the arrow above the green. And uh, we have very late injection and this really corresponds to very high NOx emissions. On the other hand, if you have very early injection, you get very high emissions of hydrocarbon emissions. But there is a trade off somewhere in between where you tailor your injection where you can combine both low hydrocarbon emissions and NOx emissions. So that's PPC we think. Uh, the third clue here to PPC is that if we look at, um, let me see here, I will just go and point here. So we start over here. And you can see that the combustion there, the blue figure, it takes a long time with diesel combustion. It's a slow combustion process. This means that we're not expanding, we're not using the engine properly for expansion. We are wasting energy. On the other extreme, we have HCCI, where we have a super fast combustion. You see the spike there in the figure? And in worst case, this leads to very high heat losses in an engine, so that's not the way to go. You need to be somewhere in between. And we think we can do this with PPC by controlling the premixedness in the combustion of the engine. And we came up with this recipe in Lund that we should run quite lean, lambda 1.5, EGR 50%, that's a lot of EGR. Uh, run should be high, so gasoline is the best fuel in a diesel type engine, so to speak. And then we control the combustion phasing with the injection. All right, I will present some uh, results now on uh, simulations experience we did. Uh, and we wanted to understand the methanol combustion a little bit better from a theoretical point of view. So behind each of these figures, there are around, well, a couple of thousands of simulations. It's a grid of simulations to construct what is known as a T5 diagram. So we have temperature on the x-axis and we have mixture strength phi on the y-axis. And you can compare this figure, say we have diesel for one figure, we have methanol for the other figure. And you can see a big difference in this soot bubble. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, you also see a difference in the adiabatic flame temperature. That's the red line. And what we see here is that it's in principle impossible to form soot with methanol combustion. That's what we're seeing here. We get NOx, which is uh, the thing we see in the corner down here. That's NOx. We have the soot over here. This is for diesel. But obviously with diesel we get soot. And actually that ha happens in reality as well. So, some people think that methane <coughs> is an emission that you can get when you have methanol as, uh, as a fuel. And the reality is not true. Um, with diesel, you can form more methane emissions than with methanol, so that's not an issue with methanol. If we look at formaldehyde emissions, and we know this is associated with methanol combustion, uh, but also here we can see that it's actually a higher probability to form uh, formaldehyde emission from diesel combustion than from methanol combustion. But I will come back and explain why we still get formaldehyde emissions from combustion engines. So we followed up with a couple of experiments, and this is a single cylinder Scania diesel engine that we operate in PPC mode, and we did it with uh, uh, methanol. And the, unfortunately, at that time in the lab, we had only had a 15 to 1 compression ratio. So everyone would say it's completely impossible to run methanol in a diesel engine like that. 
Uh, Scania, for instance, is running their ED95 engine with 2080 compression ratio, and they're still using ignition improver. We don't use any ignition improver. We have a bag of tricks that we use instead. So the students made it possible, and they run the experiments. And you can see here we have uh, on the table a calibration between the experiments and simulations. And the figure shows the quality of the calibration of the experiments versus the simulations. Um, and then we include, <coughs> is it playing? Yeah. yeah, it's playing. Great, I cannot see it on the screen here. So we are putting in the simulations from the experiments in the phi T diagram. And we can see the fuel is injected and we have combustion starting at the lean regions. And we go all the way out to the adiabatic train temperature. So this is how methanol combustion works. We didn't use any EGR, so we get uh, quite a lot of NOx in this particular case here. But this gives you an idea of how it works and how you can use these phi T diagrams in relation to engine experiments. So why then are methanol engines associated with high formaldehyde emissions and formation of formic acid? And this form formic acid is important to avoid because that's the root of the corrosion in methanol engines, so we should avoid that, of course. And we have to look at the, how we have been operating the engines in the phi T space, so to speak. So if we look at the figure with uh, conventional methanol premixed SI combustion, that's how methanol has been used in carbureted SI engines. So what happens is you get a lot of fuel that is wall quenched, and it's, I will show you here, it's in this region. It never leaves this region, but if you operate with diesel combustion, conventional diesel fuel and diesel combustion, you follow the adiabatic flame temperature line. So you will not have quenched fuel that form formic acid or formaldehyde emissions. Does it run? Yeah, and you can see here that the fuel is pushed down into the crevice at the side of the piston and the cylinder with early injection. If we run late injection, we don't have that problem at all. And just following the fuel droplets, you can see it's pushed down the fuel into the side. It's never combusted. And this leads to formal, formaldehyde emissions and formic acid formation. And with late injection, you don't have this problem at all. And the Versula guys, they were clever. I have to say that. They didn't give me any money, but they are still clever. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, they're at least part of our research project, so I'm very happy for that, of course. They created this uh, injector where you have direct injection, late direct injection of both fuels. So they are avoiding uh, these problems with, um, with formaldehyde and um, uh, formic acid. They don't detect it, really. So very low emissions of those troublesome components. We can see also that the NOx is heavily reduced with methanol combustion in their engine, and they run with a, roughly the same efficiency as with the diesel engine. They could probably improve a little bit on that. Uh, yeah, I think this figure just confirms this, and um, we see that the smoke emissions are also heavily reduced as well. Okay, so time for the Conclusions, and if we start with methanol, one of the most promising candidates for low cost, high efficiency, and low emissions operation, I would say. Uh, neat methanol combustion is soot free. Direct injection and compre compression ignition of methanol operation. Um, we can see that dual fuel with direct injected diesel and port injected alcohol is established. That works, we have seen that a couple of times, but lead to very high emissions. The Versla concept where you have direct injection of both fuels is a much better path to follow, I would say. Uh, the conclusions on PPC, high efficiency, low emissions, and very high load operation. When we try to maximize load, we were always breaking the, 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 the propeller shaft for the engine, so uh, you can operate really rough with that engine. It's extremely fuel flexible. Uh, it is a research concept, we must remember that, so it's fairly immature in many aspects. It's difficult with coal starting and uh, low load operation, and you have high combustion noise. That's uh, something you get from engines with very high efficiency. We have already proved that methanol PPC is possible, and we will continue to work to improve the concept as such. Um, some observation and research opportunities. I think this with late direct injection is something that we should continue to work on. 
for all types of engines, even for SI engines, uh, because it has good uh, improvement on the emissions. PIPC methanol is possible, but we'll, we will continue the research, and the goal is to reach 60% gross indicated efficiency. We have done 57% gross indicated efficiency, which is, I think, is the world record uh, for a single fuel on a heavy duty engine. Um, another thing that I didn't dwell into very much, but to some of the engine experts here I will understand what I'm talking about. So methanol has high sensitivity as a fuel. The RON versus MON is quite different. And high heat of vaporization, which is usually attributed or seen as a problem. I think this is actually an opportunity to create a load adaptive fuel. So um, I'm very curious what we can do with that. Okay, I think that was it, so thank you. Great. Thank you.